started blowing glass at the age of 18. I graduated high school early and took a glass class. From that point on, I was enamored by glass. It really had captured me. So at the age of 23, I moved to, to Chico State and decided I wanted to get my degree in glass. After focusing with glass at Chico, I wanted to continue to develop my style, my career, and learn more about different ways of working with glass, the way different cultures approach glass as well. So I spent some time living in Seattle, working for Dale Chihuly, which is really well-known name throughout Glass. After moving back to Laguna Beach, I basically want to develop a line and develop a production line, which is a variety of work, different series of work. And those different series kind of evolved throughout time. One was called my Nest series. Recently, I've been doing it quite a bit, just clear using the crystal, and I'm taking multiple gathers of clear glass out of the furnace, winding it onto a bubble, which creates texture onto the surface of the piece. We'll at least take 10 gathers of fresh glass out of the furnace and continuously wind really fine threads of glass on the surface of the vessel. After studying glass in Czech Republic, I moved back to Laguna Beach and I started Jeffrey's Glass in Laguna Beach about 10 years ago. And uh, when I got to Laguna, my plan was I just wanted to continue to blow glass, but I wanted at that point to try and focus on more of taking all these experiences that I had throughout my career and, and put that together and create my own style and start to develop my own what we call signature look or line. And so when I moved to Laguna, my goal was to create a body of work. So another series that I work on is called the Transparent Series, and what I do with that is I use transparent color, I start a bubble on a blowpipe, and use transparent color, and I cover the bubble with that transparent color. After that I take an encasement of clear glass, and then I pick up opaque white color, and then with that white, what I'm doing is I'm creating a line or lines, which is my design work that I'll apply on top of the clear. And then I'll melt that in and take one or two more gathers of clear on top of it. And with this particular series, I make what's called a pinched face, which is a transparent color. It has one single line on it. And then I'll blow up the form round. Using cork paddles, I flatten that form to a flat round shape. And so it goes from a round bubble to a flattened shape. After I have that flattened shape, I heat the, the form up and using a conical steel shape tool, which is called a Sofietta, from both sides of the bubble, I'm pushing in with equal pressure from both sides of the bubble while it's hot, creating a pinch on the interior of it. The glass that we're working with is coming from North Carolina. It's a lead-free, erbium-based crystal, and we melt it at 2200 degrees, 22500. 
people sometimes ask me what's the difference between my hand blown glass and glass that's made in factories worldwide. The difference between the two is that uh, the glass that I'm making and working with, each piece is hand blown. Nothing that I'm working with is blown in, mass produced into molds. And the factories, people will have one particular job. All they'll do is gather glass all day. They'll have to gather the first gather. And then a second person will gather the second gather. And then maybe the third person puts on a color application and maybe the fourth person blows it into the mold. And that each one of those individuals, maybe they'll do that 400 times a day. They'll blow into that same mold, and make the same form. calipers to measure things but nothing is uh, blown into molds in order to recreate the same shape. We just do it by eye. After the pieces are made we're grinding and polishing the bases of each piece so they're all high polished and they're all hand finished as well and each piece kind of is going to have a little bit of different personality or a little bit of different characteristic maybe whether or not it's a little bit different from the last one we made but it's not a mass production type of item. It takes a lifetime to master the craft of glass blowing. It's not something that you that you figure out overnight, and it's not something that you ever will, I think, master even in a lifetime. Unlike painting or not just painting in particular, but certain forms of art, when it's something that you can work on by yourself, you can sit down with a canvas and you start a painting and you finish it. You usually don't have multiple people or elements going on in order to, to develop or produce, let's say, a painting or a certain form of art. But with glass blowing, we always work in teams and we always have at least one to two, maybe sometimes three different assistants working on one particular piece. So it takes a lot of teamwork and a lot of timing and a lot of understanding your assistant's knowledge and them understanding you and what you need at what particular time. So there's a lot of elements going on, the temperature that things are, color applications that they bring to you to apply to the piece, what temperature and what shape they need to be. And as you're, as you're making the piece, as you're developing the piece, um, how hot things need to be. So if I give uh, the, the piece of glass on the blowpipe to my assistant and they go to take a heat, depending on what part of the process we're at, they need to know exactly where to heat it, how much to heat it, how fast to turn, how hard to blow into the pipe. There's all these elements that are required without me having the time to tell them what to do. They just know kind of what to do and when to do it by having the experience of working with you, having the time spent, endless hours with that particular artist and being able to anticipate your next move.